take actions in support of migrants. Quote, the bond between Christians and Muslims is founded on the unbreakable strength of charity and justice, said Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, the president of the U.S. Catholic Bishops Conference, and Archbishop Jose Gomez of Los Angeles, the vice president of the Bishops Conference. They said in their statement, and I'm not kidding, quote, the church will not waver in her defenses of our sisters and brothers in all faiths who suffer at the hands of merciless persecutors, end quote. Now, that's just a euphemism for Donald Trump's immigration policy is something we as Catholic bishops are going to oppose. This is a direct shot at the pro-life, pro-America, pro-borders guy, Donald Trump and his administration. So you want to know who's backing the far left right now? Pope Francis, with his trickle down right through the, using the church's hierarchy, right down to the street, organizing and encouraging protests against this administration. For what? What's their sin? Abortion? No, they're trying to do something about that. Their sin is they believe in a nation state. They believe in borders. But how do you, you begin to understand why over at the remnant last month, we sent out an open letter to Donald Trump asking the Trump administration to look into whether or not George Soros, President Barack Obama, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton at the time, conspired to overthrow Pope Benedict XVI. And so we asked these questions of the Trump administration. We asked them to investigate. I signed the letter. Chris Ferrara signed a number of us signed it. Did they use America's intelligence agencies and our nation's diplomatic machinery, political muscle, and financial power to coerce and blackmail regime change in the Roman Catholic Church? To what end was the National Security Agency monitoring the conclave that elected Pope Francis? What, what, was the NSA monitoring the conclave? What other covert operations were carried out by U.S. government operatives concerning the resignation of Pope Benedict or the conclave that elected Pope Francis? Folks, we shouldn't get used to that resignation. It was one of the most bizarre things we've ever seen. And we still have two popes in the Vatican. Did the U.S. government operatives have contact with Cardinal Damiels and his mafia? What actions, if any, were actually taken by John Podesta, Hillary Clinton, and the others who tied to the Obama administration, who were involved in, this, in the discussion, remember, proposing the fomenting of a Catholic spring? So what, what roles were played now by George Soros and the other international financiers who may be currently residing in the United States territory? These are the questions that we put to the Trump administration, and we're pursuing this. We want to find out. Yeah. Now we have a much, much more serious development. Now we have John Podesta in conversation with Sandy Newman, a left-wing uh, uh, fellow traveler, so to speak, arguing that we need a revolution within the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. to which Podesta says, yes, I've been working on it. That's why we created the Catholics United and Catholics Alliance in the common, for the common good. In other words, these two foe phony dissident Catholic organizations, which I've been at war with for years, funded by George Soros, were created by John Podesta for the purpose of being like termites to eat away at the foundation of the Catholic Church. Here's the pattern. Soros provides the money, the point man running offense is Podesta, Catholics United does the dirty work along with Catholics in alliance with the common good. February 29th, 24 bishops and Cardinal Peter Turkson published and signed the message from Modesto, it's called, pledging to disrupt the Trump administration over immigration, the fight against terrorism, and health care. Now, you'll remember Cardinal Turkson. He's the guy who, during the Synod on the Family, promised that, according to Pope Francis' desires and, and his wishes, that next year's Synod, that's this year, we're going to tackle the issue of gay unions in the Catholic Church. And now he's leading the charge as a prominent uh, Vatican Cardinal, he's re leading the charge against the Trump administration, specifically on health care and immigration. A few days ago, pro board Senator Tim Kaine, he decided it was his turn to go hang out with the Pope. You know, Senator Kaine, Hillary Clinton's running mate, that guy, he's a Catholic supposedly. Well, he got to meet with Pope Francis last week in the Vatican, of course, he got the royal treatment. He and the Pope discussed the global refugee and migrant crisis, of course, which is uh. a euphemism for borders. They discussed the issue of, of borders, and they released a statement saying, quote, as the Pope stated so clearly yesterday, this is from Tim Kaine, as the Pope stated so clearly yesterday, it is a moral imperative to protect and defend the inalienable rights of refugees and respect their dignity. 
especially by adopting just laws that protect those fleeing dangerous and inhumane situations. Now, you don't have to be a sleuth to realize what he's talking about. They're talking once again about Trump's immigration policy, trying to do something about the Muslim invasion. So let's take a look at Tim Kaine. Here's what he's saying when he doesn't have audiences, when he's not enjoying audiences with Pope Francis. Let's take a look at this guy. And you know, like many people of faith, and including maybe many in this room, my support for marriage equality now, my full, complete, unconditional support for marriage equality is at odds with the current doctrine of the church that I still attend. Correct. But, um, but I think that's going to change too. Mm. I think that's going to change too. Wow. Pope Francis famously said, who am I to judge? And to that I want to add, who am I to challenge God for the beautiful diversity of the human family? I think we're supposed to celebrate it, not challenge it. Now the question is, why would Pope Francis meet with this man? Why would he give him and the not singular with Cardinal honor? Burke. Is it to convert him? Yeah, that's probably it. He's trying to convert him. Please, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's stop with that. Yeah. We need to open our eyes. He's not trying to convert him. Mm -mm. He's not interested. When's the last time you, t you heard Pope Francis speak about the things of the soul? Mm -mm. Even when he talks about taking care of poor people all the time. Remember what, this, what the corporal works of mercy are all about. They're about perfecting ourselves, doing good, seeing Christ in others and poor people and serving them because ultimately we all are trying to get to heaven. And those are the virtues, if you will, that will help us and aid us save our souls. Well, Pope Francis never connects those dots. Mm -hmm. He just acts like the whole point and purpose of the Catholic Church is, to, is for social uplift, taking care of poor people, and that's it. But the Church has always seen that as a means not only of taking care of the poor people, but of converting them and also by those who are helping poor people develop virtue so they can save their souls because there is a heaven and a hell thing at the end of all this. But Francis doesn't talk about that. So he's not talking to Tim Kaine about converting him. Come on, that's just naivety. That's ridiculous. But a couple of days ago, Pope Francis was quoted all around the world as saying that it would be better to be an atheist than a bad Christian. Oh this was during a, a morning mass, by the way, at the Casa Santa Marta. And it was reported by Vatican Radio, not, not the Pope's critics. Vatican Radio is reporting this. And it was referring to wealthy people who love Jesus and go to Mass, but who don't do enough for the marginalized. Oh. He says, how many times have we heard, all of us, around the world, around the neighborhood and elsewhere, but to be a Catholic like that, it's better to be an atheist, end quote. Now, it's important to realize what he's saying. Of course, hypocritical Catholics are not good. But, but for the Pope to say, oh, it's better to be an atheist, someone who hates God, rather than a weak Catholic who doesn't do enough for poor people, this is absurd. And many people go about their daily lives, they make their donations, they may have a lot of money. This is the other thing, he takes a shot at people who have money, that they're not doing anything for the poor people. Well, I know, I know some people with money, and they give a lot, a lot of it to charitable organizations. This is class warfare, folks, coming right from the lips of the Pope. The rich people, they're not bad, they're not good Catholic. It'd be better to be atheist than a rich man. Yeah, he's taking this incredible risk by saying that sort of thing. Why? Because he's pandering to his friends on the left. And it worked. CNN, the Associated Press, the Washington Post, they love it. And under a montage of photo quotes from Pope Francis, which Rob will put up on the screen for us as I, as I read this, CNN writes the following quote on their website, quote, In the United States, some Catholics have cited the church's teaching on scandal to argue that priests, get this, priests should not distribute Holy Communion to politicians who support abortion rights. Francis, a sharp critic of capitalist excesses, turned his scorn instead on greedy business people, end quote. So all of a sudden,